good evening, beloveds. I'm seeing you from the other side of the day. Um, my physical therapy this morning was pushed back 15 minutes and then basically another 10 minutes. Um, so that means I didn't get home in time. Uh, I got home in time to change clothes and go to work. Uh, so I will be back to 9 a.m. tomorrow, but today. But she released me to run. So I'm very excited about that. <clears throat> well, okay. She released me to a light jog. And I'm like, how fast do you think I run? <laughs> but um, it is December 22nd. Our title is I Enter Into the Limitless Variations That the Divine Spirit Has Projected Into My Experience. It's a mouthful. Um, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And that is 1 Peter 1, 24 and 25. And the unreal hath no being, the real never ce ceaseth to be. And that is from the Bhagavad Gita. All right. So the Bhagavad Gita tells us that unreality unre has no existence, while reality cannot cease to be. Our lesson also states that all of the effects of the spirit are themselves real and that there is nothing different from the divine spirit. Jesus tells us to judge not according to appearances. However, he did not tell us he however, he did not tell us that appearances are unreal. The unreality of appearance lies not in the thing of itself, but rather in our interpretation of it. If we spiritually interpret the universe, we shall understand it, enter into it, and become one with it. We shall see that the bird, the rock, the mountain, and the river are spiritual manifestations of the joy of the divine mind. The illusion is in seeking to interpret them as being separate from the infinite. The blade of the grass may wither and the petals fall from the flower, but the idea... The word of the Lord endureth forever. <clears throat> this lesson teaches us that there is not only the fundamental unity, there is also an eternal variety. Without this variety, life would become stagnant. Today I enter into the limitless variation that the Spirit, the Divine Spirit has projected into my experience. I know that all things are good when rightly used. I perceive that all experience is a play of life upon itself. I enter into the game of living, then, with joyful anticipation, with spontaneous enthusiasm, and with the determination to play the game well and to enjoy it. All right. So what comes to mind is... <clears throat> The line, the illusion is in seeking to interpret them as being separate from the infinite is probably the clearest line ever in science of mind. And it is definitely a lot clearer than we ever can expect from any religious or spiritual um, teaching. Because a lot of, they're, they're couched in metaphors and and, um, well, mostly metaphors and other things where you're like, what? So you have to stop and you have to think about them. And he just put it right there in black and white. The illusion is in seeking to interpret them as being separate from the infinite. <laughs> I mean, right there, black and white. That is the mistake that we make with appearances. Every time. Every time. If we would cease to see them as separate, it would make a world of difference. Alrighty then. Okay. So, I was just like, 
That is the clearest line I have ever seen in any religion I have ever studied. <sighs> At least in answer to, you know, one of those questions. I mean, there were a number of times Jesus was pretty clear. Love one another as I have loved you. I mean, you can't get any clearer than that, but you know what I mean. All right, so. I enter into the limitless variations that the divine spirit has projected into my experience. And he's talking about the multitude of ways that life shows up. Um, how we can all be the same, meaning coming from the same source, and yet look so wildly different. And have such wildly different experiences. And I love how he ends it. He says, well, we should just enter it with joy and happiness and enthusiasm and just go for it. Because difference is good. Um, it makes for, it makes life interesting. Um, I like people who think a little different and have a little different idea and, you know, think of things that I wouldn't have think, thought of because, you know, they have different experiences. It's what makes being friends with them fun because we're going to do something different and interesting and I'm going to learn something and I live to learn. Uh, if you haven't learned anything about me in this, um, what, nine months, I live to learn. Um, okay. So <laughs> the Bible quotes kind of depressing for all the flesh is as grass and all the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Read that. Come here. And then, you, so that's from Peter. And then you follow that up with uh, the, the, Bhagavad, the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the unreal hath no being, the real never ceaseth to be. And Ernest teaches that. It's like, that's how we, that's, that's his entire premise under the healing is that you allow a condition to go back into the no thing, the nothing that it was, that it, that, that it is. Um, and you go back to the idea of the divine, of what should be happening. Um, so the Bhagavad Gita tells us that unreality has no existence while reality cannot cease to be. Our lesson also states that all of the effects of the spirit are themselves real and they're <clears throat> okay all of the effects of the spirit are themselves real so the effects of spirit are real and that there is nothing different from the divine spirit and that there is there is nothing different from the divine spirit Jesus tells us to judge not according to appearance so Jesus tells us not to judge according to experience. However, he did not tell us that appearances were unreal. He just said, don't judge them. <clears throat> the unreality of appearance lies not in the thing itself, but rather in our interpretation of it. Everybody, it's like, we can both watch the same, we can all watch the same sunrise. And all of us are going to see a slightly different sunrise. All of us, you know, we're, we're all going to focus on different things. I'm, our eyes are a little different. We're going to see different colors. We're going to hear different things. So, you know, it's not fair really for one person to say, this isn't good when everybody else goes, oh, well, we're not seeing what you see because we're literally not. <clears throat> it, I mean, everything we see, hear, smell, it, that's an interpretation. It's an interpretation. And it's not fair to judge by that. We are allowed to discern because, you know, if you don't like something, don't do it again. But, um, well, I say that. I don't like push-ups and I still do them. <sighs> um, if we spiritually interpret the universe, we shall understand it, enter into it, and become one with it. Okay, if we spiritually interpret it, um, which then goes back to that line that I repeated, the illusion is in seek the illusion is in seeking to interpret them as being separate from the infinite. So spiritually, we are saying it all comes from the same source. 
it looks wildly different, but it all comes from the same source. And that's where judgment comes in. If we judge it as different, we judge it, then we can judge it as separate. If we judge it as separate, then we can judge, we can give value. And that's where our mistake is, is everything and everyone has the same value because it's all from the same source. <clears throat> But we're, we're human and we make value judgments. We make value interpretations. Well, God values everything the same because it's all God. And we say, well, this is more valuable than that. And to you or to me, that's true. But it's not to everybody. And when we try and push our value interpretations on somebody else, that's when we are, and we, yeah, that's where it is. That's where it is. So, um, <clears throat> if we spiritually interpret the universe is to understand that it's all from the same source and it all has the same value. We shall see that the bird, the rock, the mountain, and the river are spiritual manifestations of the joy of the divine mind. It all has the same value. There are Bible quotes about the lilies in the field being arrayed as beautifully as Solomon. And um, does the father in heaven not know when a sparrow falls in the field or forest? Um, so everything has the same value to spirit. You have the same value to spirit as everybody else. It's kind of like telling somebody that you're you're special and unique just like everybody else. <laughs> Which is true. We're all special and unique. Just like everybody else. We are all manifestation spiritual manifestations of the joy of the divine mind. I, that's a way to go through the day. The joy, thinking I, you, are a manifestation of the joy of the divine mind. I mean, it makes me happy to think about. <clears throat> the illusion is in seeking to interpret them as being separate from the infinite. Okay, I've rep repeated that one ad nauseum, so let's move on. I'm just blown away by that idea. Joy of the divine mind. The blades of the grass may wither and the petals may fall from the flower, but the idea, the word of the Lord endureth forever. And that's exactly what we all are. We're all ideas in the divine mind. We are spiritual manifestations of the joy of the divine mind. This lesson teaches us that there is not only the fundamental unity, there is also an eternal variety. Without this variety, life would become stagnant. And that's true. Life would be definitely stagnant. Okay, so <clears throat> I know that this, <laughs> tonight, today I enter into this limitless variation that the divine spirit has projected into my experience. I know that all things are good when rightly used. I perceive that all experience is, experience is a play of life upon itself. I perceive that all experience is a play of life upon itself. I enter into the game of living, then, with joyful anticipation, with spontaneous enthusiasm, and with the determination to play the game well and to enjoy it. So right there, Ernest is telling you to enjoy life. And I would ask you, if you're not enjoying life... What can you do to change that? I'm not asking you what you're doing wrong. I'm not asking you what you're doing right. I'm asking you, if you are not enjoying life, is there some small change that you can make that might help you enjoy life a little bit more? A small change. It doesn't have to be a big change. I mean, God help us, we're in the holiday season. Um... Now is not the time to be making big changes. Uh, we are getting close to closing out this year of 2020. Um, and 
honestly, it has been a hard year to enjoy. But have you taken those small spots of joy that you have found? And have you made an effort to make more of them? Uh, every day I say to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. Uh, and I will continue to say that. that That is who I am. That is what I want everyone, everyone to do. I want everyone to be loving, kind, and compassionate to themselves. And I want them to find that joy. Uh, and I want them to recognize that they are spiritual manifestations of joy in the divine mind. I want everybody to recognize that they're children of God. And all that that implies. That, that divine inheritance of peace, love, Harmony, joy, creation. Oh, so our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to recognize that we are all spiritual manifestations of the joy of the divine mind. And seek to interpret it from a spiritual point. <clears throat> to recognize the unity and the eternal variety. So, I know it is the, it's pretty late, um, but if you're seeing this at another time, as always, and it's not too late today, to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. Um, I encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body today. Trust me, physical therapy engages my mind and my body because I have to think about how to do what she's asking me to do. Because uh, she gave me some fun doings today. <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed um, Dr. McGowan. She has been awesome. Uh, and she's gone a long way to helping me. So now I just have to keep doing the physical therapy. Ah, uh, that's the problem with, with doctors that do that kind of work. It's like they can tell when you've d been doing it and they can tell when you have it. Um, and so I got kudos because I've been doing it. And as I told her, I paid a lot of money for those exercises. I'm going to do them. Um, so, you know, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do to make it wonderful, to make it fantastic. Or do what you need to do just to make it a little bit better. Because sometimes we can't have wonderful and we can't have fantastic. It's just not the day for that. But we can do a little something to make it a little bit better. So, I encourage you to open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you that you live in heaven now. You are a beloved child of spirit in whom spirit is well pleased. You are a spiritual manifestation of the joy of the divine mind. And that is the state of grace that we live in. It's up to us to recognize it, though. So, enjoy what's left of your evening. I know Reverend David was on a, a, a couple hours ago, so he was on around 5. I will be back at 9 a.m. tomorrow, barring anything unusual. Um, as of now, I have been released from physical therapy with the doctor. It's on, I'm on my own now. Um, so I don't foresee anything <laughs> outside of turning my alarm off when I am on my Christmas vacation. But I should still be here around 9 a.m. And I'm sure Reverend David will be back with us around 5. So I will see you tomorrow. All right, beloveds. Have a wonderful day.